In this video, I'm going to explain about different type of atomic models like Dalton atomic theory, Thomson, and also Rutherford. First, I'm going to start with Dalton atomic theory. Dalton atomic theory has four postulates. The first says all matter is composed of atoms. So all matters, they have atoms. It says also atom is very small. Also, atom is indivisible. Also, this atom, they never change during the chemical reaction. So there is no change when we have chemical reaction. So this is the first postulate for the Dalton atomic model. The second is talking about element. An element has only one type of atom, like hydrogen, like iron. This is iron. This is hydrogen, this is argon. It doesn't matter if they have one atom in their structure or more than one atom, like hydrogen. But all of these atoms, they are same. Also, each type of atom for each element, they have a specific mass. So this mass is the character of the atoms. So each atom has a specific mass. So there is two important points for the second postulate. It says each atom has a specific mass. Today, we need to revise this one. We know element, they may have different type of atom that we call it isotope. I explain isotope in another video. Also, because it talks about the specific mass of the atom, it can explain the law of conservation of mass in chemical reaction. The third one is explain compounds. Compounds, they have more than one type of atom in their structure. So basically different type of atom, they can combine to each other by a chemical bond and make a compound like carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has two different elements, carbon and oxygen or water. It has two different elements again, hydrogen, and oxygen. Methane, again two different type of atom, carbon and hydrogen. Or ethanol, that it has three type of atoms. Dalton explained that the ratio of the atom in the compound, it is fixed. So they have the fixed proportion. But today we know this is not completely true. Because for combination of carbon and oxygen, for example, we have another type of compound like carbon monoxide. We have another type of compound for hydrogen and oxygen. It is hydrogen peroxide and so on. So this is also not completely true today, but on its time, it was a very good explanation. And the last one is talking about the chemical reaction. Dalton theory says the chemical reaction, it is just rearrangement of the atoms in their combination. It means some atom, they break their bond and attach to another atom. So that is the chemical reaction. For example, combustion of methane, it produces water and carbon dioxide. Here, the arrangement of the atom is carbon and hydrogen, they combine together and oxygen atoms, they combine together. But when the chemical reaction happens, this combination is changed. Right now, oxygen and hydrogen, they combine together and also Oxygen and carbon, they combine together. This equation is not balanced. If we want to balance it, we need to put one, two here and one, two here. Uh, I explain balancing of the equations in another video. But as you can see here, the Dalton theory, it has a couple of things we need to fix it. He was the person he talking about the atoms and the property of atoms for the compounds. After that, a lot of scientists were interested to discover more about the atom. After Dalton, J.J. Thompson in, in 1897 developed a series of experiments and he was able to discover the first subatomic particle. He proved that Dalton was wrong about the atom and atom can divide it to the smaller particle. Here is the experiment for Thomson. He had a tube like this. This tube was attached to the vacuum and there was two plates here. This has negative charge. 
So it is cathode and the other one of course has positive charge. And at the center of the positive electrode, for the positive charge, it was a hole. When he performed this experiment, he observed from the negative electrode, a beam is formed and passing through the positive electrode. And if we have two electrically charged plates with positive and negative charge, this ray shows some deviation toward positive plate. Because this ray absorbed by the positive plate, it's clearly showed it should have the negative charge. He called this ray cathode ray. And he performed a series of experiments and changed the material for these two electrodes. But he got the same result. So it is clearly show that the material or the particle for the cathode ray is not depend to the electrode. So if we use iron or copper or other metals, we will have the same result. So it is something is not depend to the atom of the elements or that compound. So it should be a particle that is completely beyond of the atom. And he called this particle electron. Because by changing the material for the negative and positive electron, the cathode ray doesn't change, it means all of the compounds, all atoms, they should have electrons. And electrons has negative charge. So we should also have the positive charge in the atom. Otherwise the atoms won't be neutral. Thomson also was able to calculate the ratio of mass of electrons over charge of electrons. But he wasn't able to calculate each of them separately. He just find the ratio. Based on the result, he proposed another atomic theory. This is the structure for the Thomson atomic model. So the electron should be distributed inside of the sphere that it has positive charge. So this yellow sphere has positive charge. This is the atoms and also electrons. They randomly distribute inside of the atoms. And he call it plum pudding model so based on this model the atom a uniform distribution of positive and negative charge because the whole of atom is positive and then electrons they distribute inside of the atom to neutralize this positive charge but thompson model can't explain the property of atoms why the gold and iron and hydrogen atoms they are different after thompson experiments another scientist robert Millikan set a series of experiments and he found the charge for electrons. And because he found the charge for electron, we are able to calculate the mass of electrons too. And the charge for electron is 1.602 10 to negative 19. After this result and atomic models, Ernest Rutherford set an experiment to get more information about the atomic structure. Rutherford used a very thin foil of gold and he bombarded it by source of alpha particle. Alpha particle, it has positive charge and he want to study the effect of this positive charge on the structure of atom. He observed most of the particle passing through the gold foil without any changing but there was a very a small portion of that particles that they scattered on different direction. And some of them even completely reflected. If the atomic structure is like the Thomson model, we shouldn't have any scattering because we have a randomly distribution of positive and negative charge. And when this particle passing through the atom, they should experience the same repulsion and attraction from the atom. So they actually shouldn't have any changing. But a very a small part of this particle, they scatter. And based on the series of experiments and calculation, Rutherford find that more than 99.95% of the mass of the atom it is concentrated on a very, very, very a small part of the atom that today we know it is nucleus. And electrons move around of this center or nucleus, like this image. Based on the calculation of Rutherford, the size of nucleus is almost 100 
thousand times smaller than atom and electrons they just move around the atom so although most of the mass of atom is belong to the nucleus but it is on a very concentrated region of atom so we can say atoms is almost empty so it has a very a small and concentrated nucleus and around of this we have electrons but between electrons and nucleus is nothing the size of the nucleus and atom is like a size of a room in compared to the size of the city so later by a study of the atomic structure by different scientists they discover in addition of electrons we have two more particle inside of the atom proton proton has positive charge and the amount of its charge is exactly equals to the electrons but the mass of proton is almost 1836 times heavier than electron there is also another particles neutron neutron doesn't have any charge so the charge for neutron is zero but the mass for neutron is almost equals to the proton It's a little heavier than protons so it's 1837 times heavier than electrons today we know there is a lot more subatomic particles but for the chemistry part we need only these three particles electrons protons and neutrons to watching more video please subscribe our youtube channel thank you